Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Play me something that moves the people, then moves the crowd. You feel the vibe in your soul beneath you, turn it up loud. It's a chance to let the feeling move across the room. Put them hands up, no reason for us to lower the boom. Whether it's two in the morning or it's half past noon, it's a moment that can't be duplicated once you start to move. Out here it's real, and then we do what we do. Don't get fooled by the groove. This ain't no realm in Scooby Doo. Back with another episode of Sundays with the Clink Room. This time we're back with Jay Matz, longtime Clink Room collaborator. Jay. How you doing? I'm doing good. Glad to be here. Good, good, good. Um, you are one of the uh, artists that we got introduced to when Clink Room 2.0 kind of got relaunched. You've been doing this a long time, so a tremendous pleasure uh, for me to have you here um, to kind of just hang out and get to know your story. We we spoke briefly before the interview started about, you know, we've, we've kind of known each other and seen each other around for about f- almost four years now. Yeah. So this is the first time formally meeting. So this is this is awesome. It gave us a reason to kind of um, connect a little bit. And um, I hope that people will um, tune in and, and learn your story and learn a little bit more about you. So happy to have you here. I'm happy for the opportunity. Cool. Cool. Uh, can you share um, what got you kind of um, put put on to the clink room? Like what made you? Um, kind of attracted to the process and, and how, how did that start for you? It was actually kind of funny timing. Um, I've always been more into logos. I, I wasn't okay. so much a hat collector as I was into logos. And a fellow Canadian, Chris Creamer's uh, sportslogos.net, you probably know his website. Um, mm-hmm. Every year, kind of like when the baseball season would kick off, that was one of my traditions was to go through and look at all the minor league logos you know, see what was new, kind of see what people were doing. And um, then I I, I saw a story, it was probably on ESPN or something, where they were doing about Brandios, one of their logos. And I went to their website and I was like, that's one of my favorites from sports logos. That's one of my favorites. That's one of my favorites. That's one of my favorites. And it's like, these guys... I feel like I'm in sync with these guys, you know? And so I started following them on Instagram and checking out their website and things. And that's where the timing thing came in. Very shortly after that, they launched Clean 2.0. And I was like, whoa, you mean I might have an opportunity to do something with these guys that, you know, I think do such incredible work. I just thought that was so great. Um, and so when they opened it up for submissions, I submitted probably three or four designs pretty quick. And um, in fact, Old Fashions, I think this was the second one I submitted. Um, and back then it was an actual glass swinging a bat and he was wearing a bowler hat. <clears throat> Sorry, getting over a cold here. And um, so he was an actual glass, you know, swinging it. He was swinging a muddler and he... and He's wearing an old bowler hat and it didn't go anywhere. And that one I ended up redoing like four times over the years before we got, finally got this one and it got through and did what it did. Um, But yeah, then I think my first one that got made was Red Wing Blackbirds. And that was pretty early on. And um, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe people are going to be buying my hat. You know, yeah. my design and a new era hat. Um, and so then I've just been pretty consistently doing it. I'm a, you know, I'm a self-taught artist uh, that in school I was a, a engineering major for a while. And then I ended up my, I ended up in broadcasting. And uh, when I was working in TV, that's where I kind of learned uh, Illustrator, Photoshop, those kinds of things, and I ended up working in the creative department with a lot of really good artists. So I was going, nice. I was able to soak up a lot from them about color and that kind of thing. And but I'm always, I've always been a doodler, you know. So when I'm in meetings at work, I'm always, all my notebooks are full of doodles everywhere. And <laughs> anytime I'm, you know, in a restaurant or something, there's doodles on the napkins. And uh, so it's kind of given me an outlet to those kind of doodles, those kind of tell a story in a quick little picture really works well for hats. And so it's a, it turned out to be a great way to be able to kind of do something with that. 
So for me, it's a lot more of a, it's a lot more of a hobby. It's a release. You know, this, this is yeah. what I do for fun. Um, and the fact that, uh, Casey, all the people at Clink are so great to work with, um, they handle all the business. They, they set it up so that you get these amazing embroidery, you know, I don't know how mm -hmm. to do any of that, but you know, I can draw something. Um, so it's been a lot of fun. Um, I think I'm, I think I'm up to my 29th hat now that's in the shop spirits, I think is my 29th. Um, so again, I never expected to get one in, um, yeah. and here we are four years later. So it's been a great ride and, and you guys, um, you know, views from the vault, especially early on with the clink, you really helped grow it and kind of introduce that collector community to it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and since then it's just grown exponentially and, you know, and what you're doing now, I think that's a great thing because um, I know I always like to check it out on Sunday, see what's coming up a little early in the crits. It gives you some time to think about it a little more because, you know, I like to vote in the crits and I like to try yeah. and make informed decisions, you know, and it's, and it's nice to be able to, to see the stuff early and to, to kind of get a feel for all of the designs before they hit. All right. Um, I remember Pierre kind of picking your your Red Wing Blackbird design out right away because he's a big fan of the symmetrical designs. And I think yeah. that we'll get into a little bit more with your work with Pierre, but I think that was one of the leading factors uh, in selecting you as uh, one of his first collaborators in that realm. But like I think of your style and I think of that hat and obviously I think of Sammy because of the sentimental uh, reasons. And now you've kind of morphed into like this uh old timey old fashioned mascot style stuff so i i love all yeah. that stuff you do um how do you kind of approach your creative process um when when looking at hat designs like what do you kind of prioritize you know what i like to do because i'll i'll have an idea and mm. you know sometimes the process is very different um sometimes i'm going through I still draw paper on pencil, right? You know, I'm, yep. I'm so old school that way. And, you know, sometimes I'm on four five, six sketches before I'm even in a place where I feel like this is worth looking at. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, because I've, I've been at this long enough and I've done well enough with it that I also have Casey's ear. Um, so if I have something, I'm like, I can send it to him and be like, what do you think? You know, yeah. It, or here's two I, two ways of going with this. What do you think? Kind of. Um, and then after I do that, I digitize it, and then I go to the color in Illustrator. Um, and again, sometimes that's a process of four or five times. Sometimes I've got five, six, seven versions of it in Illustrator. Um, but then there's other times the one that just uh, finished up stocking stuffers with uh, Santa dunking the basketball. Start to finish from my first sketch to finishing coloring was about 45 minutes because oh, I, wow. I drew the sketch and I was like, I like this. And, and <laughs> then I colored and when you're coloring Santa, there's no decisions, you know, it's, it's Kinda red, white, know. black. You're going to throw some green on there, you know? And so I finished that and I was like, I don't know. I kind of like this. I sent it to Casey. And he's like, send me the artwork. And it was <laughs> that quick, you know? Um, yeah. But there's other times that I work on something for weeks and weeks, you know? So it, yeah. the, the process, you know, I have in a notebook, I have just ideas written down, just words of things mm -hmm. that, you know, come to my head or whatever that I, I say, okay, this might be something cool to do. Um, and then other times it just starts as a sketch. Um, and now I've been doing, um, I've been doing a lot of collaborate. Pierre was my first collaboration, but, uh, I've been working with Lane a lot now. And, yeah. uh, I think I have, I think I have five in line with him right now. So I'll be working on them tonight, Lane. Don't worry every night. <laughs> um, but he, he's an ideas machine, you know? And, um, yeah. and so that's fun too, because, 
um, you know, sometimes yourself, you hit a block, you know, you, you, uh, when I, when I go with hats, um, so I'm not, I'm not like a fit guy, you know, like I'm not matching my shoes to my hat, to my outfit. I, I just have a pair of black and white shoes, you know, um, that go with everything. I'm more of an event guy. So I like having holiday hats. I like having, and so I've got a 4th of July hat, a Thanksgiving hat, a Halloween hat, a Christmas hat now. Um, or like when I go to concerts, I want to wear a hat. Or if I go to the state fair, I want to wear a hat. Um, and so I've kind of hit all those things, you know, that I kind of really wanted to do. So now it's more kind of fun ideas, but then it's nice. Um, Every once in a while, like the ice cream cup one I did, mm -hmm. that was Casey sent me. He just sent me a picture of one of those ice cream cups and he goes, do something with this, you know, because um, <laughs> it was an idea he had had that he thought I'd be right for, you know. And so yes. I, I always thank him for those kind of opportunities. But then it's fun because now someone has given you an idea and you're trying to bring it to life and, and put your own spin on it, too. So, yeah. Do you, do you have any um, specific projects or favorites that kind of just stand out in terms of stuff you've done in the past? So I did a, um, a fact check. We do, in fact, see 30 results. So I think maybe oh, besties maybe put you to the 30. Put you that to could the 30 be. Mark. Yeah, yeah, that could be. Um, you know, like I say, old-fashioned so special just because that's something I came out with right away when I didn't know what I was doing. And mm -hmm. I learned a lot to get it to the place where it would become successful. Um, so to me, that was personally satisfying to be able to do that. Uh, another one that was like that was Hoop Dreams. Um, the one where it's uh, the basketball hoop where it's a uh, um, milk crate. Almost like a crate. Yeah, crate. Yeah. Yeah. And so I had done that originally a couple of years ago. My sister's huge into basketball. We love March Madness and everything. And and so I kind of wanted to do something with that. And um, again, that one just didn't, it didn't take. And then a couple of years later, I was kind of going back through my old designs. I was like, I think there's still something here with this one. So I was like, what if I put it on a dark cap? And then I'm like, oh, I'm going to put some stars on here. And it'll be hoop dreams. They're dreaming. They're trying to, you know, and yeah. suddenly that, the drawing didn't change that much, but the story changed completely from a, a like Tar Heel blue hat where it's bright and everything to this dark sky night scene. That really, um, so I, sometimes um, what people get, have to remember is it's not always just the art. Sometimes yeah. it's the story too. Um, so I, I like to obviously Red Wing Blackwards. I'm already on my third iteration of that because they they did the x-ray one and then hat club mm -hmm. did a all color where it was kind of uh southeast kind of colors where or uh, southwest colors where it was kind of copper and that teal color um so that one's been a big success for me i personally i really like the nosferatu that was an early one uh that right. it was the vampire with the candy corn teeth uh, oh, just because yeah, yeah. that's that's very much candy. kind of my sense of humor you know yeah, yeah. Um, worst candy of all time, by the way. Yeah, the and it was like really that's all anybody. I never ate it as a kid. All we did was we'd put it on our teeth like fangs, mm -hmm. you know, and then mm -hmm. spit it out. Uh, so I thought uh, I really liked that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think all of them. I I've never had one go through that. I didn't feel was in some way worthwhile working on. Um, even my my lowest seller of all time, Bayside Beats, which is just like that 90s neon color. It was like a boom box and basically it kind of looked like the Saved triangle. by the Bell. Yeah. 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 Um, even that was more just an experiment in, in color. Cool. Um, and I, I did one. It didn't go anywhere. It didn't get out of the crits, but I enjoyed working on that one where it was like I made it look like a like a stairs going down into the hat and then there were eyes looking out and it was supposed to be like the monster in the basement kind of thing. 
um, so I like kind of experimenting with stuff like that. Like, hey, could you could you do something like this in a hat? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I like um, for Christmas, my son got me some paint markers. I've never worked with paint markers before. I painted before, but I've never yeah. worked with that before. So, you know, last few days I've been messing around with that. And it's like, oh, it's fun. It's just fun to try and do different things and, and different see what mediums. you can do with it. Yeah. yeah awesome. I, I applaud your um your flexibility because I think back to one of your original hats and you were trying to uh, correct me if I'm wrong because this this is I feel like it's a couple years old now, but your design with the uh, float like a butterfly sting like a bee originally was meant for your daughter. Or yeah, because it was more she... like purple and teal and stuff. Yeah, because she's obsessed with butterflies. Okay. And so I, I thought I had a pretty clever monarch butterfly design where it was a symmetrical one. And then the mm -hmm. antennas made a crown. So it was like a monarch, like a king royalty kind of thing. Yeah. But that didn't go anywhere. So then I was like, oh, well, what's going to appeal to dudes who buy hats? Yeah. But also my daughter likes butterflies. So I'm like, oh, how about Muhammad? And I went to school in Louisville. So Muhammad Ali's, you know. That's his hometown and everything. So I, uh, so then it, yeah, it was purple and teal and he was skinny. Like he yeah, was, yeah. it was, you know, it was like the normal butterfly arms and legs with big boxing gloves on. And then Casey's like, no, let's push this and, and make him thick, make him like Muhammad Ali. And, yeah. um, you know, and it worked great. And then they they use that metallic um, embroidery on it, and mm -hmm. that it turned out great. And I I my only regret on that because very quickly afterwards we did um, the sting like a bee because we're like, well, let's do both sides of it, two parts, and yeah. just do it. And and so it's like a series thing. And so then we did like a bee same kind of style in a different pose kind of thing. But that was right when the COVID kind of production delays hit and you had that huge delay. Yeah. And, you know, I always feel like Sting Like a Bee would have, it still did well, but I think it would, it didn't do nor, nearly as well as Fall Like a Butterfly. And I feel like it would have been more on par with that, but that, you know, that exactly. happened in the middle. And I, and I <laughs> yeah. understand for people who, uh, you know, you had the early adopters who were on it early. And then you, then, like I said, you guys start doing your show and stuff and all these new people start coming in and they ordering all these hats. And then suddenly these production delays hit. And now you've got, you know, rumors, it's a scam. You're never going to get your hats, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it's like, no, no, you know, they're trying. And, and I've got hats in hand and they're gorgeous, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, their customer service has always been top notch to me, you know? And, uh, uh, so yeah, but now it's funny because you come out of that on the other side and I feel like the audience has kind of even changed again as it's grown, you yeah. know, what's kind of popular keeps changing. Um, you know, there's some hats I did early on that I don't think would go anywhere today, but at the time did really well. And there's stuff I do now that I feel like had I done that at the beginning, people would have been like, eh. Um, so it, you're in a way too, you're kind of all of the artists too, you know, we're kind of growing and changing with the audience and you're getting new voices in there too, you know, for sure. So that makes it interesting. It's it's almost like it's different chapters, right? So obviously, Clink 1.0 was like the forms and the OGs, you know, the uh, hillside yeah. goods and um, uh, cork bottoms and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, the original Ephras and and yeah. um, Dankadelics and 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 whatever. But and then we got the 2.0s, and then it kind of got stopped by what you talked about with the delays and all that. And then like the 2.5 came, and from there we saw. Raphael's and the uh, Wind Studios and and um, Sierra Gons and kind of like who we see really really popular now, 
uh, shame is something enough. And then now it's like we're on, I, I feel like we're right on the cusp of the 3.0 because we got the insta ships, the 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 shock drops, the the packs, you know, uh, the side patches. So I feel like yep. you know it, it's ever evolving and and things are um, kind of changing, um, not at a rapid pace because it's literally been you know 16 years since they've opened up but you know like this, this is I, I feel like we're right at the uh, beginning of something um kind of different and, and it's exciting you know so um to have you from the beginning days of 2.0 and and still have you um submit and have hats made like it's it's a cool feeling for sure um uh how do you kind of stay updated on like current trends and and stuff like that do you uh, work to incorporate them into your work or are you more so like just trying to s stay on your style? Well, I, one thing I've learned is you can't look at what's succeeding and mm -hmm. just try and do that. Okay. Um, the ones that I've done that have been the most successful have been the ones where I was doing my thing. Yeah. Um, I have a, I have a friend who's a really good uh, watercolor artist. His name's Rob Momarts. He does, he does uh, all sorts of uh, stuff for board games, for cryptozoic games. He does children's books. He does all this, but his style is unmistakable. You, you look and you see it. And, a lot of the artists I like, like comic book artists, like Mike Manola and things that, and Scotty Young, that you see a drawing, you know, it's, it's them, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that if anything, I'm influenced by subject matter. Okay. So if you see that, you know, we had that, you know, they just re-released the besties, you know, and there was that streak there where dog hats were really big. So oh, it's yeah. like, okay, what, what could I do to do a dog hat, but, but do it my way. You know what I mean? Um, so it's not trying to do a dog hat, just like Jason V is doing. It's not trying to do a dog hat, like somebody else is doing or, or looking at what's the top selling. Oh, we got to do this. Um, it's more, okay, this seems to be doing, you know, like we talk about, uh, cause I had done barn swallows this year which was a symmetrical kind of Casey challenged me to do a follow-up to red wing blackbirds. And so I was yeah. trying to think of a cool bird to do that with. Um, so that idea of like birds always seem to do well. Um, my first Robin one this year was one of my top sellers for the year. Um, yeah. And so for whatever reason, now am I just going to draw birds every week? No, cause that's not interesting to me either. But when mm -hmm. the idea comes up with a bird, that might be something I move to the front of the list, you know, because I know for whatever reason, clean collectors like birds. You know? Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Not that I don't. I think there's, a, yeah, there's like a rule. I think hack, hack club, uh, some of the insiders always say like birds, native themes and letter logos always do yeah. well, you know, um, are there any uh, artists out there? Uh, within the clink um, community that you kind of look at and, and kind of um, are fans of who, who are some of the, your favorite clinkers? I mean, there's, there's a lot and I, I don't mean an insult if I leave anybody's name oh, off yeah. of it. I'm putting um, you on the spot and, and I'm not giving you yeah, no, a chance. So. Um, uh, but uh, I, I like Ryan Simmons. Um because he's got kind of a cartoony style and I like, he's done some yeah. really nice cartoony stuff and I like that style. Yeah. Um, I think he's an animator. I think he comes from Yeah, animation. and so I I just, it's one of those things where it's like, there's certain people that you always kind of dig their stuff. I mean, obviously Yacobo, you know, but Aurelian, you know, mm -hmm. but they're just, I just like to look at their stuff because I go, whoa, I, I never would have thought of that, you know, or doing it that yeah. way. Um, so those are always interesting. And um, Seamus, you know, he came out of the gate, I think, with that Alpacalypse. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's how you're going to start? Holy cow, you know. Um, and he's, and um, 
you know, he's done some really good ones since then. Um, but, you know, there's no, it's not like there's any bad artists, you know, even some people who maybe some of their early stuff was kind of rough. And, and it's not that it's rough art, it's rough in that it's not embroidery art. And yeah. they learn the game as they go, you know, and so, you know, they're starting off really with real thin lines and a ton of detail. And then, and then, um, and you know, there were, some, there, there have been people too who have come along that way and, and didn't learn, didn't grow. And then they kind of fell yeah. away. Maybe they're doing their own thing, you know, somewhere else. Um, and again, it's not to say it wasn't good art. It's just, you, you, you learn what you can do, what works, you know, I like to think that at this point, um, there's not a lot of changes that need to be made. You know, the, if I get something on the crits, it gets through on Monday. What comes out Friday is not usually radically changed. Correct. Yeah. Uh, whereas I had, you know, earlier on, there were more radical changes. Um, so I feel like I understand. I couldn't do it. I couldn't set up the medium the right way, but I think I understand it enough to know, okay, I need to simplify this more. And I know Casey Oz says, nope, simplify it more. Like whenever you think yeah. you've simplified it enough, no, you need to simplify it more. So, yeah. Um, I, I think that happens a lot with artists that are like used to different mediums. So like, I think of like a t-shirt artist or even sticker artists, you know, they're used to, precision whereas uh a hat needs more um you got to almost think of it as like a 3d image and the thread as your layers almost like where you're going to place certain things and like you said you got a certain there's certain things that the needle can't handle so you have to you know leave it out or use negative space or you know certain things you got to outline in a certain way and then there's other guys like Seamus that just don't outline anything and it looks amazing. So, you know, yep. uh, there, there's, you know, different um, levels to um, kind of how that works. Um, in terms of like the community, like how, how much does community uh, feedback uh, play in the role of shaping your designs for the Green Group? You know, um, when stuff is in crits, you know, I was, I was reading comments. And, um, you know, people comment on my posts. Um, I, I don't get as much feedback in the posts as I used to. Okay. Um, okay. You know, it used to be more like, maybe you should try this color. Maybe you should do this. Maybe you should be, you know, maybe you should, his arm should be here instead of here kind of thing. Um, and there, there are times that then I go, yeah, maybe I'll try that. And, uh, you know, I always try and give props to the person who brought it up, you know, if, if I do go that way. Um, part of it, though, is what people don't see is before I get to the point that I'm posting it. Like I said, a lot of times I'm on four or five sketches yeah. and I'm on five, six, seven color versions. I've tried a lot of it. You know what I mean? Like somebody would be like, oh, you should be doing this. I'm like, yeah, I, I tried that, you know. And it's yeah. not to be dismissive or anything, but um, a lot of times um, I, th I think that the every once in a while there will be a comment that you're like, oh, man, I never thought of that. Mm -hmm. I got to try that. But a lot of times the comments are things I have tried. Um, and, yeah. and just for whatever reason, I went the other way. Um, so I think, you know, it's interesting because so much of social media, the comments are brutal, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, but clink people are pretty good about keeping things positive. You know, every once in a while you get the person who says, I wouldn't buy a single one of these hats, but they don't say why or anything. And it's like, okay, yeah, maybe they're having a bad Monday, you know, or maybe they really wouldn't buy any of the hats. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, and that's their choice. Um, but I try not to, 
take any of that personally, uh, mm. as it were. You can't. You can't. No. Because it will just ruin your day. Yeah, because there's always going to be... Ne you're never going to please everybody. Mm. And when I'm putting something out there, I'm only putting something out there that I'm happy with. I won't put something out there I'm not happy with. So if I'm happy with it and other people are happy with it, hey, that's great. But if I'm happy, I've, I've had some designs that I love that never even got to the crits. You know, there, if you go to my page, there's a bunch of stuff that never gets to the crits. Because uh, yeah. I throw a lot of spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks, you know. And um, yeah. uh, But that doesn't matter to me. You know, some of them I'm disappointed because I'm like, man, I would really like to have this hat. But at the same time, I might go, that might sell one hat to me, you know. Um, yeah. So Clink Room doesn't need that. They're running a business. Um, so I, I never take offense at that. Um, I don't think I've, I know some people have run into things about, you know, someone's biting someone's design or, or, uh, cultural appropriation, you know, things like that, um, that I've tried to, when I work on a sketch, I do my research to make sure I'm not, you know, I don't want to be thought of as stealing someone's design. And and again, I have the advantage of I've been around from the beginning. So mm -hmm. I'll see something. I'm like, man, I think I've seen that before. And yeah. But I don't remember where. But I think, well, maybe this is an artist like me who's taken a third, fourth crack at it, you know. Mm -hmm. Or is it somebody new who came in? I don't necessarily know. And I'm, I'm not going through all that. But I, I try... You know, when I'll do something, I'll Google what I'm doing and see, like, did anybody else do something like this? And if they did, a lot of times, well, I'm not working on it then. That that idea has been done. I don't I don't need to do it. So. Um, but, yeah, I I don't think I've. I, I hopefully haven't been involved in any drama. <laughs> I don't think so. We, we need somewhere out there that's uh, so, someone out there that's smarter than us to make a clinkopedia. And in that way, we can have filters on, like, UFOs. I mean, fish, we, they're know. on, <laughs> you know, what, 1,200-some hats? You know, it's like, and, and granted, there's still new ideas every week. But, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to start to, um, you know, it's not necessarily malicious all the time. Yeah. I'll yeah. just say that. And, go, but. and going back to the, the Internet thing and, and, and the community, just, like, it is what you make it. So, like, today... For whatever reason, uh, well, before my internet troubles, um, I was going back and forth <laughs> with people. I shouldn't have, but whatever. I, f I felt like it. Um, I'll admit it. But it was on like this wholesaler um, account, and they are interviewing, um, it's like a wholesaler for hats. And then she said with such confidence, like, "What? What's the minimum quantity?" And she's like, "A thousand. And then you know, maybe I shouldn't have. But, you know, I had time and I put it out there. I'm like, who's ordering a thousand of the same style, same hat? And all these people hit me up just to troll me. What do you know? What a stupid question. You know, who are you to ask this? And then I, and I, and I just, you know, I had time. So I went back with them. And I'm like, are you buying a thousand of the same hat? Like, yeah, brands are whatever. Yeah, you know, no problem. Ten thousand I'll even take. I'm like, and I looked at their page. And I'm like, you have 300 followers. Not to put you down, but like you want to take ten thousand hats, you have three hundred followers, you know. <laughs> You're other people have with seven thousand seven thousand hats in your basement for a long time. If you yeah, <laughs> and other people are like, uh, should you even be here? And I look at their 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 page and they have zero posts. I'm like, should you be here? You have zero posts. Like, what do you have to add? So, I think like people are really quick because there's no filter and there's no real way of meeting these people but i think a lot of times is like the trolls out there or just the people looking to waste time have no clue like they just want to sound like they're the smartest person in the room or want to add something to something um or want to gatekeep like oh you shouldn't be here I'm like, i shouldn't be here like i'm a designer for nine stores i own my own uh, brand we've sold five hundred thousand dollars on our website 
and I've never ordered more than a hundred of one hat. Well, I did, and I regretted it. But now you have someone here saying you should order a thousand. So it's like sometimes you gotta check people. But then, like, then I thought of them. Like, I've really just wasted two hours of my life for nothing. Like, and I'm getting mad at strangers for nothing. Not really mad, but like you know, to, to even go back and forth, it wasn't like a good use of my time. But it's just funny to see like people just kind of jump on and have a mob mentality and think they know better or just whatever. Just yeah. Just just be so brave. I'm like, okay, you have like a hundred followers. Like, not to put down anyone with a hundred followers, but like you're telling me you're gonna sell like a thousand of the same hat. Like, that's a big number. So yeah. So I always feel Ooh. bad. My my biggest thing is um, you know, I'm busy. I got kids. I'm not on mm -hmm. Instagram all the time. And sometimes I'll get alerts and then I don't check them right away. And then I forget about them, you know? And mm -hmm. um, so, you know, somebody might message me and I don't get back to them for like a week or two. Cause I'm like, Oh shoot, there's a message. I never saw, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's not that I'm, I think sometimes people take that as, Oh, he's too big to talk to me or too, you know, and it's not that at all. Um, yeah. And I, I'm kind of, um, even at my day job, I'm, uh, you know, just cause, okay, what's the business? What do we got to do? You know, what's the next step, you know, kind of thing. Um, so sometimes I think when people want to be more chit chatty, I'm just kind of like, Oh, here's what you could do, you know, and move on. And mm -hmm. so I've, you know, sometimes people have said, Oh, I thought you were mad at me or you didn't like me. And I was like, no, 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 that, that, that wasn't it at all. I'm sorry. You know? Yeah. Um, I think for me, I've turned off notifications on Instagram Yeah. and it's like, I'll get on. I probably use it way more than I should, but like it goes on when I want it to go on, not because someone yeah. messaged me or not because someone liked the photo or whatever. I can, there's no way I could have um, notifications on. Um, you can't have yeah. a life and do it. Yeah, exactly. But um, Jay, thank you so much for doing that uh, and kind of giving people a peek behind the curtain to kind of uh, get to know you better. But uh, let's get down to the brass tacks. So All right. we came here to review some stuff and to talk about crits. But first up, the dead stock drop. Um, now, uh, Clink Room has moved towards, um, so not for all their drops, but for at least the next couple. It's more thematic and colorways and stuff like that. This drop, I think, is the first time they've done like thematic plus colorway. And then the the, the third variable is is each uh, one of the hats has a different color under visor. So oh, I didn't even notice under, that. Yeah, so they're all like a like a Vegas gold and black hat, and then the under visor will have a a tie to the front logo. So okay, these will ship right away. And they dropped um, on Monday. So the first three we'll cover is Aurelian's Blue Boys and then Jason V's Besties. So the original Besties with uh, the Rose and then like a uh, Valentine's Day one with the, the Arrow. What are your initial thoughts here? Well, I mean, obviously these these are two rock stars that, mm -hmm. you know, they don't, they don't miss uh, when they do things. And uh, kind of what I like about um, like the two different Frenchies is, and I think this is some people could learn from Jason, like the one with the rose, it's the same dog basically, but yeah. the difference is he changed up the pose. You know, it's got its head cocked a little, it's turned to the side, it's not a straight on. And then the Valentine one, he had a little red to the eyes to tie in with the red on the arrow. And it's looking straight on. So he's, to keep it interesting for himself, he didn't just take that same one and put an arrow in its mouth, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so just the fact that, you know, he wants to play around with that. And then, um, you know, this one, I like Blue Boys because of how that, that light blue pops off that hat. Yeah. Um, you know, especially the the frenchies with the rose that's very subtle because it's all just that lighter shade of pink there's 
there's not a lot of contrast to the Vegas gold there. Um, mm -hmm. And so personally, I just like the blue boys because I think that pops real nice. Nice. I never asked Jason Bean when I had him on the show, and I think I should have, like, what is his muse for this dog? Is it like his dog? I was always curious, like, it, it, like it's always in the same color too, like that kind of brindle, uh, fawn kind of color. So it would be interesting to see this dog because we've seen so many versions, you know, the the the, the Frenchy swearing one, the Frenchy stance. Yeah. Um, but it's always like it's always colored in the same way. So I'm kind of curious to see what that actual dog looks like. I'm sure he did a great job with it. Um, yeah. But yeah, because Frenchies come in all different colors right blue i think like black browns so that'd be one thing just to kind of mix it up a little that uh that would be kind of interesting to see because it's always in that uh that kind of fawn color but i definitely picked up the uh, valentine's day one and hopefully um i'll have it in time to wear uh, <laughs> on valentine's day because <laughs> i don't really have a valentine's day hat really i don't think yeah that's one holiday i don't have one so yeah yeah. There was that one a couple years ago that looked like it was a cap that was kind of shaped like a heart with an arrow through it. That was a nice yes. one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it made, yeah, it made the whole uh, yeah. Yeah. image of the heart. Yeah, that was a cool one. That was one of the ones that, like, on mock-up, it didn't look that cool. But then when you saw it mock um, embroidered, you're like, oh, man, what did I, what was yeah. I thinking? <laughs> yeah, I think I think Dopest Robot did that one. Uh, and the I comics so, were correct. Yeah. Uh, but we got Hallowed, uh, Sammy, and Rough Riders. Um, Obviously, Sammy's the best here. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> um, That's the one I picked I, up on. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, again, that I, I was talking to Casey about this. I said, you know what's cool about this is those other dogs and Rough Riders and Sammy, those are old Clink room designs before Clink took off. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think there are a lot of people now who never got a chance at those designs. And, but the fact that they're changing up the colorways doesn't take away the value from those originals. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you have that original and you're a collector and you've got the black Sammy. You want that's still that's still a feather in your cap that you got the black one because mm. only those people who are there at the beginning have that one but now this gives some other people an opportunity um to be able to do that and i think it's it's funny with hollowed um i think that's the only hat he's ever even submitted and i think they're on the third iteration of that because it was one of the clink classics that just yeah. finished up. Um, so there was the original black one, and then they did that kind of green version that was uh, the Clint Classics for the end of year, and now this one. Um, yeah. So just shows the strength of that design that, you know, you can have, it's, it's being put out there in different ways just because people love it so much. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Check in the production tracker. He has actually one more. Oh, does he? Still, okay. Uh, white sized. It's those old uh, plastic teeth uh, for Halloween. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But definitely. Yeah, because I, I just remember going to his Instagram page and just scrolling through and I saw a lot of other stuff, but I didn't see a lot of other hats on there. So I was like, I think this might be his own one, but okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> and this one too is perfect because it's so close to the original. I think it's pretty much colored the same as the OG, maybe there was a little bit more purple in it, but like this was really one for those people you kind of talked about. If you just missed the original, yeah, you know, you have a chance to get it. So I was really on the fence between this and the other one, um, but I ended up going besties just because of my connection <laughs> with uh, my good friend Pierre. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I just wanted it to, to go with the original. Um, yeah. And it's it's such a meaningful hat, and uh, for a long time I kept it in a case along with uh, my first clink room hat. Just kind of you know my views from the vault partner, and you know us having our first uh, clink room hats kind of on display. So I always kept them 
uh, clean and pristine. But yeah, just such a unfortunate end for Sammy. But you know, he still got to show his love for for you know his dog. You know. Well, and you know, I kind of like because the original one was black and it had mm -hmm. basically a black outline. So I mean, there's so much black already in the dog. Yeah. That. I feel like you see the design better on this Vegas gold hat. I think, yeah. I mean, it still works on the black hat, but I think you get a better sense of the dimensions of it. I just yeah. think it, it pops even more on this color hat. And I understand why they use the yellow under. It's from the halo. Yeah. I kind of wish I people hate the yellow unders because yeah, it makes their faces wish. look yellow. Yeah, I kind of wish they did green, but I mean, it's still, it's still, I still picked it up. You know, I understand why they did it because, like, uh, um, Jason V's uh, Rough Riders, I think, has teal, and yeah. then the, the Besties has, I think, orange or even purple. But I understand why. I just wish it was green, but then it would have broke the whole logic, the color logic of the other one. So I understand. But, yeah. you know, um, it's still cool to have it back because that is one of the, you you said it originally, right? July 2020, I think you said. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think that's when I don't know if that's when I put it up or that's when we went in the shop, but yeah, it was so that was almost four years coming up on this summer. So yeah. See, just time time flies. <laughs> but yeah, uh, great, great to see it. And 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 it was great timing here. So, you know, we, we dropped it and we got you in the lab. So that's kind of awesome. But uh yeah, so those the uh those will ship right away for anyone who purchases them. You don't have to wait the pre-order period. Um, they're ready to go. So, uh, and they, they are limited quantities, um, mm -hmm. and by size. So you know, yeah, um, I know you can sort by size too. So if you're looking at these, because I think there's there's sizes that have already sold out of some of these. Yeah, for sure. And then the next up is this is the second shock drop we've seen in the last couple of weeks. So I think Casey has, uh, and I'm not giving away any um, in, too much insider information. I think Paco uh, previewed all of them. So there's three Kongs and three Clinks, all have different side patches. This is the second shock drop. Omar has been teasing this all day. Uh, Cat Fiend, make sure you guys give uh, Omar a follow, but. Uh, this drop so it's like a old gold and black kind of that uh old pirates pittsburgh pirates uh mustard um yellowish gold with a lot of copper um, on the kong and then the san diego side patch so kind of how it broke down is an email uh, went out to the vips um, and then a text went out a half an hour later and then finally um, an email to general public went out uh half hour after that so make sure you guys are signed up for the text alerts and vips um because that will give you a head start on the general population um out there but uh do you have any initial thoughts um about this drop and kind of the style that they're moving towards um to keep people you know i think i i think this is another interesting you know they're never afraid to try things you know, yeah. they, they've got their bread and butter, which is Monday morning credits, Friday mm -hmm. up for pre-order. But, you know, they tried stickers for a while. They, you know, tried T-shirts. for, And it's it's one of those things where Casey's never afraid to like, well, let's try this and see how this works. Because they, they have their business model for the main Clink hats. But, you know, I feel like these are geared more towards those collectors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when I heard that they were going to be doing side patches, kind of part of me kind of rolled my eyes because um, you see a lot of side patches that just look tacked on. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. I get the ones where it's like team logo and then, you know, 67 World Series champion on the side or something. Um, but sometimes stuff looks tacked on. And you look at this. This is a perfect example of. Even the side patches are designed by clink people. You know what I yeah. mean? So it's unique art 
still in that clink room vein. And how it is here, it looks like it belongs. It looks like this hat was designed with that there in the colors, the, the placement, the size, um, you know, and the fact, uh, obviously because they're based in San Diego, that's why they have that on there. Um, but I feel like this is one of those, this is very much, I feel like a fashion hat more than anything. You know, this is something you can wear with, you know, your, your khakis and your brown boots, you know what I mean? Like this is, yeah something that those earth tones i mean it's really nice and and even you know they still had those subtle highlights on kong's face um so i think that's the kind of thing you know and having the big clink logo last week uh with that kind of grayish silver um i think that's the kind of stuff too that people the collectors who are really into this are going to really, I think they're really going to like these things. So, yeah, I think they're doing a good job of kind of like what you said, bridge the gap a little bit. So like here you see um, like a Pittsburgh pirates colorway. I think the next two clink word marks, one is done in like a Dodge blue and the other one is done in a, a Yankee Navy. I don't think that's a mistake. So you know, I think they're kind of trying to bridge the gap between, like, you know, uh, license, quote unquote, license collectors, uh, like MLB team collectors and stuff like that. So I like it. So I'm for well, anything that... the advantage of they're using the MLB fabrics, you know, because yeah. of their Brandios connection. You know, it's like when they use Yankee Blue, it's Yankee Blue. You know, when they use Dodger Blue, it's Dodger, you know. Um, exactly. And when you think of, those, like you say, bridging the gap. The people who are collecting those team hats, the license hats, they probably have a whole wardrobe that matches that color. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. they're buying a lot of hats in those colorways, and now you throw this in there, and it's something they go, "Well, I can just throw that right in the rotation." You know, exactly. Um, so I think it's a smart. You know, obviously. It's going to depend on sales, you know. If, like I say, they're never afraid to try things, but doesn't go well, you know, it'll go away. If it goes, if it goes really well, we're going to see more of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see. Well, there's at least four more coming. Okay. Um, in terms of two more uh, Kongs and two more clink uh, clink word marks, so uh, keep your eyes peeled. Make sure you're following all the appropriate influencers and stuff um for uh you know clues to when when those next ones are dropping but in terms of that now we'll get into the last calls so these ones will end their pre-order tonight at midnight um, and then they'll be sent off to production so you have one last chance to get your pre-orders in so the first of the six the first three you have eye candy golden kong and pushing lilies uh do you have any initial thoughts here of, of the last calls, these were my three favorite of them. They just happen oh, okay. to all be on the same slide. Um, right. I love the Golden Kong. Um, I love the the action of it, the mm -hmm. shape of it, and the color, the the highlights on everything. It really feels like you know some sort of anime or some video game or something where this guy's fist is turning into a lava or a ball of fire. Um, so I love that. That's probably my favorite. Um, eye candy, I think is great. Um, yeah. it's such a kind of detailed and realistic eye, which, you know, normally you go, well, you, you can't pull that off, but because it's so big, you know, it, and more than anything, that one works. You could be a half a block away and know what that is. You know what I mean? Yeah. It works. We talk sometimes about does it work far away and close? This one would work from way far away because you can tell right away what that is. Um, and pushing lilies, I think that's clever from the standpoint of, you know, it's normally pushing daisies. And when I read the description, you know, it said, well, what if there are no daisies? Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, I like that. Uh, and I really like the colors. Um, I like that. Um, 
you know, there's almost that bone color to the lily too, but then just that that subtle pink in there. Um, so I really like the colors. And actually, um, when I went to their page, uh, there was an earlier design that was almost more like a t-shirt design. It was it was yeah. like a vertical one, like the the whole like kind of forearm and and uh, skeleton hand were coming kind of up and holding it. So it's like that's a, something where, you know. If you did a T-shirt design in this same color, you know that'd be a nice thing to be able to put together. So, yeah, I remember eye candy a lot because I think they did like a Halloween week. Yeah, and it was like a lot of Halloween, and then yeah. this one came out I think shortly after, and I was like, damn, this one missed Halloween week. This one might be the best Halloween one. So, yeah. I think they changed the color so that it doesn't look so Halloween-y, I guess. Like, now it's just, like, this kind of, like, dark green and gray. But, yeah, that one is so cool. Like, there's a brand. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but uh, Mishka always would do just an eyeball. And it's oh yeah, know, one of their most popular designs, Keep Watch. And then they had, like, the teeth underneath. But uh, they've since lost their uh, New Era account, fortunately. But this is, like that without being so that if that makes any sense so okay. this is like uh kind of giving me like mishka vibes without you know totally ripping off the look it's an elite pun i think seamus doesn't do a hat unless it has like a cool pun <laughs> yeah he's just one of those artists that's you know next level so i like that one that one like you said it sticks out far away you can wear that and someone can know from across you the don't have to explain it to anyone, anyone. They're gonna look yeah. at it and go, "Oh, eye candy," you know. Yeah. There's there's no exactly. explanation needed. Exactly. Um, so that one is my standout out of the three, I would say. Uh, so let's take a look at these ones. So we got um, '40s back with the Bad Granny version of Shams, Rebirth by uh, Clinker Ryan Simmons. You brought up, you brought him up earlier, and the Komodo Holiday by Happy's Indo. Uh, do you have any initial thoughts here? I love the Bad Granny because uh, it's got kind of that Looney Tunes vibe to it mm -hmm. without being Looney Tunes style. Um, yeah. So again, here's somebody who took something that is instantly recognizable of that idea of that cartoony wolf dressed up as grandma, but it's not ripping off anyone's style. It's his own style. Mm -hmm. um, Rebirth, you know, it made me think of like, you know, you see it everywhere. Like, plants growing in abandoned buildings or cracks in the sidewalk or that kind of stuff like that how you know life pushes through and here he did a nice job here one of the things i like is that the the crusty dry ground you know that it's not just that the skull is there you can tell this is dead dry ground because it's got all those cracks around it um so that really helps punch that up um and kimono holiday that's fun um i like the colors I, I what i was thinking on that is because you know his explanation was uh, how komodo dragon would have so much fun a holiday and all i could think of is how bad a holiday that would be for everybody else because yeah, every time really... you see a video of a komodo dragon it's like biting something and dragging it off into the so i'm picturing people on the beach and all of a sudden here this guy comes and grabs your shoulder and drags you off and then he's coming back out to lay out um but you know again What's cool about this is the artist there is from Indonesia. And you look mm -hmm. at a lot of his stuff, and he's bringing such a different sensibility and style. And that's one of the cool things about Clink is you have people from all parts of the world who are very much bringing their culture. And, you know, I know there's a lot of people from a lot of different cultures here in America. But it all yeah. kind of gets mixed together. You know what I mean? And so when you see somebody who's, you know, immersed in that other culture, a lot of this stuff really pops um, because it's so different. And it's interesting to look at. Yeah. Like, so for us, it seems so far away, right? Like, Komono Dragon. Yeah. But for them, for them uh, I think his name's Danny. So Danny here uh, from Indonesia, like, that's where the Komodo dragon lives on the islands of Indonesia. So like, it's something that, you know, he's definitely dealt with 
and uh is not so far away it just seems like it'd be such a creature that like you know is so mythical and whatever it just seems so far for us because well i guess we got we have crocodiles and gators i guess but um still one of those things you would definitely mess up your holiday if you <laughs> came across it um in the wrong way but yeah like the colors of of the, the background you know it's, it's not just the palm trees because the palm trees feels like something anybody could do here but then it's got yeah. that kind of architecture up the other side exactly that is that that foreign element that that's that's not something you see here whereas you know people are doing california hats they're doing florida hats they're throwing those same palm trees in it's the other side that sets it off as something different definitely definitely but for me the highlight has to be the shams huge 40 fan um he's taking his uh, wolf and sheep's clothing to another level so now we got the wolf and grandma's clothing there's so much personality with his stuff um yeah you can look at it. and the colors are just so different than what we're used to seeing him use like teal with this like uh hot pink almost like just so different um and unexpected but i love that series it's long been one of my favorites uh within the clink room so any anything to do with shams i'm in and those polka uh, dots you know that really helps yeah sell the grandma aspect of it you know that kind of you feel like it's you know an older yeah. kind of fabric pattern yeah then the little glasses well and stuff yeah like, yeah, yeah. He, he kills it but uh rebirth is cool too it's it's got uh, like you said um the kind of crackles it'll be interesting to see what they do with it will they fill those in uh with that uh, tonal color or will they just leave it as negative space um this is definitely uh, a cool one uh, for sure for this design i worry about its uh, repeatability factor later you know can this be done on different colorways but regardless it's still a beautiful hat in this uh form yeah but uh yeah so make sure you guys get your um uh, pre-orders in um you have till midnight tonight for these last six until they get sent in for production um and then sent to you within the next couple months but now the main event we will start with the crits so i finally uh the comments were killing me over the last couple of weeks make sure you add numbers make sure you add numbers i did remember to add the numbers so shout out to everyone in the comments i did add numbers for, for you guys today so number one in the crits copycat by seamus and creature uh you have any initial thoughts here there they go with the puns again those those mm -hmm. two are masters of that and I I had the good fortune to work with Creaturezoid on uh, the Crocus Smiles, the one that was a takeoff on the Cleveland Indians hat, um, which he was able to do his own thing with. So, um, but this one, you know, I get that feeling of the copier that's off. You know what I mean? Like the the print heads are off. So you're seeing that CMYK kind of trail yeah. behind it. Um, I don't know if I, I don't know if I would have gone with a lighter hat. I mean, nobody wants a white. Well, I shouldn't say that. You're wearing a white crown. Most people don't want a white crown because they're going to get dirty too fast. But mm. almost to give it more of that paper feel. You know what I mean? Because um, I think it would have been even more obvious what was happening if you had that more kind of paper feel to it you know what i mean um but that being said i like the design um yeah. so i i think that's a good one it's cool they're taking elements of uh like the licensed world because right now cascading logos are so popular uh, it you know just with the repeating patterns and stuff like that yeah i'm with it now that i think about it uh, it doesn't like having it on a white hat, even if it's off white, chrome, college white, whatever, um, would kind of just reiterate that copycat feel. Yeah. Cause like, this is like a, there's like a Lynx, right? A Lynx Bobcat. I would or, say, yeah. Yeah. It's not, you don't really think of like tan or Savannah or anything like that. They're more like a forest. Sometimes I remember, um, certain videos of them 
jumping sorry excuse my dogs uh jumping into the snow and trying to catch different yeah uh, animals so that 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 pose is just so um kind of iconic but yeah i don't think like that tan color uh works for the animal but you know it's still art wise it's it's a great piece of art and pun wise it's elite so um don't love the purple under but you know other than that like uh, we're just nitpicking i think this is a great yeah i think it's just trying to tie it into the purple you know yaws anytime you have a color in there mm -hmm. you want it you never want a color that's just kind of floating out there you know what i mean yeah in a design where it's like what's that doing in there um so i think sometimes and i do it too where i'm either trying to you know get it on the under or get it on the squatch here or something you know to get it get it in there somewhere else we had this discussion on views from the vault what looks more proper in in terms of cascading logos so if you were doing a project like this would you rather the initial subject be the center or center the whole piece so it's weighted evenly i'll tell you my preference after you tell me yours <laughs> I think when you're doing, because I've done I've done work with like doing like halftone stuff, uh, th mm -hmm. and this is for print, not for embroidery, yeah. obviously. Um, although you could do halftone with that too, but that uh, uh, when something's offset like that, it's it's intentionally not lining up, and usually there's. You know, I would almost say, can you do two, three on this side, but still have one, one and a half on this? You know what I mean? Like, to yeah. feel like the whole thing's off. Like, I feel yeah. like, um, um, but is something like this, this reminds me almost of like, uh, well, you're in Canada, so maybe you wouldn't remember this, but when we were kids, when there'd be like a special on CBS and like the, the, when they were doing Rudolph or something, the word special would come in and it was always trailing behind that. Or, uh, I think Hanna Barbera did that too with their animation or, or filmation, one of those on like the cartoons where it would kind of spin in and it's kind of trailing behind there. So this feels more like that where it's kind of like trailing behind there. Um, but if you're trying to give it that look of, almost i don't want to say distressed but almost like it's purposely kind of off and mm -hmm. in in some sort of um like one of the things i learned like um with doing video is like if you want something to look like it hits the screen and and make it more realistic it actually has to come forward a little bit extra come back come back and and settle there has to be a little a little spring to it um so that there has to be a little bit of like it went a little further and came back okay i i don't know if that works with you know maybe it's a case of like the cascadings are smaller behind it and then there's a couple that are larger kind of outlining it in front um but that would just be my thought Fair enough. So I prefer the center subject to be the center. And then whatever cascading happens after it doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter. I want the subject to be the center of the hat. Cause if you were to center it based on, I guess the total weight, I feel like this, the, the main piece being off center throws it off for whatever reason in my head. So. Yeah. And I think like, if you were to do that with this one, that mm -hmm. that lynx's shoulder is going to be over there you know at the eyelet you know like the tail is going to yeah. almost be at the center line yeah and that's gonna if you're gonna go that far off then it's almost doing a quarter panel thing you know and then then just go all the way over there um yeah. if that's what you're gonna do but yeah i think people our eyes naturally like symmetrical things and mm -hmm. and things that are centered and so you're not necessarily going to know why it's off 
But I, I think that when you center it off the total weight of the piece, people might look at it and say, something's just off on that. And I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, but that's not necessarily going to encourage somebody to buy it if if they feel like something's off about it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But either way, beautiful hat, beautiful yeah. pun. And great, great job. great job on the cat and everything. Um, great pose, like you said. Yeah. All right. Let's see who's next. Faded Love, Tri Dub Design Co. Um, went almost tattoo flashy. I was gonna say this this looks like a tattoo. This yeah um looks like a tattoo and a hand. at uh, this to me looks like something that would do well i feel like this will do well in the crits yeah i mean skulls is like almost yeah been cheap skull in a rose and uh but it, but it's not like he i shouldn't say he i don't know if this is a he i don't know try dub design uh, John uh but who, Wo Wo -chick. John Wilcher, okay. out of Ottawa, Ontario. Okay, fellow Canadian. There you go, another Canadian. Um, I think this is very recognizable as being tattoo art, but I don't feel like it's stealing any other. It's It still feels like their design. Um, mm -hmm. So I like it. Would you, would you go total black? on the black parts because like right now it's like a graphite i almost feel like if you if you're gonna go i almost like that, feel you like well. you do that kind of real dark navy like you think okay. of old tattoos that it's not yeah. really black it's more yeah, of yeah, a yeah. bluish black yeah or even almost i think you could a super dark yeah to do it more like um Um, to do something like that, I think would be better than, I think because tattoos are, you know, they start vibrant, but they, they don't stay that way. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so this gives the feeling of this is a tattoo that somebody has and has had. And mm -hmm. I feel like if you went pure black, it might overpower the other parts. That's fair enough. what I think. May, but, may look too much like a sticker or something. Yeah. 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 It would look more, it would still be a tattoo art kind of design, but this feels like a tattoo. It's got more of that, that color palette. Yeah. And and he colored it like a tattoo would be colored, like the rose petals has negative skin. So like that's kind of where you would just leave the ink off and just let the skin kind of breathe through. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I think, own. you know, I think on the oh, petals or on the the leaves, there's a mm -hmm. there's a lot of fine line work on there. Yeah, that would probably have to be simplified. I think the rest of the line work is fine, like on the skull and on the rose itself. Yeah. Um, but the the one the one leaf kind of to the left that that's a little thicker. I think that's more what the rest would have to be. But mm -hmm. that's nitpicky. Yeah. Yeah. I almost think you could just reduce the leaves to one on each side to possibly. I mean, the extra leaves doesn't really matter too much, but if you go one on each side, then you can really pack in the details. Yeah. Uh, I don't love the the teardrop, but, you know, it, because it's there, it doesn't really take away from it. It's just kind of thinking out loud. Uh, and I'd probably opt to get like a like a really light gray under visor maybe even green um but other than that it's it's just cool design it's kind of fresh i haven't really seen too many like tattoo style yeah designs i don't think at least at least off the top of my head so great job try dub uh design co let's see what number three uh viper roulette so it looks like uh levi got together with heather the green one and uh they have this uh, roulette style viper casino design. Um, I don't really know how to play roulette, I just know that's really easy to lose money. Um, I, and I think that's part of what they're going for here is like you're gonna get bit, you're gonna play this, and you're gonna get bit. Yeah, um, and I like the um, this is one of those things where 
when you're when you're talking about composition, like mm -hmm. the way they put that roulette wheel into the shape of the snake, perfect. Yeah. You can still see it coiling around twice, but that and when you're talking about something being centered, that roulette wheel is dead center. Um, the only concern design wise is it might be a touch tall. Yeah. Um, so there, there might be a way to just lower that head just a hair and maybe that bottom curl of the snake up a little. Um, but really great composition and um, really, yeah, I just really like, and they, they tied the colors from the roulette wheel into the rest of it too. So that's nice. I think there might be a slight scaling issue with the tail being so big, but other than that, um, it's cool design. The colors are super vibrant. Like the the green with the red reminds me of like that classic, like kind of Gucci pattern, Gucci style thing. Uh, the outline, I almost want to would rather see it be really punched in. Maybe a red outline would be kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's an interesting one. Is I, I don't remember. Is the ball supposed to be white on a roulette table? That I don't even know. I don't even play roulette enough. To I, I really. think it's kind of like a ivory. Okay, but I think they were just kind of going more with. The color of everything else. Mm -hmm. That's. I feel like feels this like. is almost wanting to be a cobra, but then at the last second it's not. So, just maybe play with the anatomy of the snake a little bit more. But I think it's a cool concept. And the the roulette wheel might need to be expanded too. Mm -hmm. Some of that line works a little seems a little thin. And again, clink room can do anything, but yeah. Um, you know, because you you've got the, one of the coils. Just cut yeah, the and coils. I and I wonder if maybe if the roulette wheel itself expanded out to kind of where one of those coils were, mm -hmm. I think that would take care of it. And I think that would make the snake look thicker, which would take care of the scaling with the tail. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's right there, though. This oh yeah, is, it's, it's pretty cool, and it's a great idea. Um. I've seen a lot of people get bit in casinos. So <laughs> I don't you know. gamble. I'm not a good loser. So I don't I don't gamble. I don't play like I'll play like cards with friends or whatever. Like, at least you're keeping that within the house. But like, yeah, yeah, I'm not a big let's spend a whole day at the casino guy because I'm not a good loser, man. Like <laughs> I, I wouldn't be able to watch, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars just evaporate. Like I already do yeah. that with my hats. So <laughs> <laughs> they're not gambling. You at least know what you're yeah. getting. Yeah, I guess. I guess fair enough. But uh Viper Roulette, good job, uh Levi and Heather. Uh, and that's number three. So number four, stiff drinks, Rafael. Uh, more skulls. So what do you think of this one? I like it. Um, it's got that skull, but that tiki vibe to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the way he tied in the flowers to the umbrella and the straw, keeping yeah. it very simple in terms of the amount of colors. Um, yeah, I like that. Raphael is so good at his stuff is hat ready every time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just to see his um, kind of evolution has been awesome. Yeah. Too, as an artist. Yeah. Um, He's one of those people who, when we were talking earlier about growing, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. He's he's really done a good job with that. Yeah. Um, this reminds me of, like, those old, uh, not even really myths, but, like, the old uh, Viking thing where they would drink out of the skull <laughs> of their... Uh, <laughs> Uh, of their enemies and cheers with skull. So if you ever hear uh, <laughs> the Viking or Scandinavians say skull, it's like because they were drinking out of skulls of their enemies. So that takes me to that. It makes me wonder, should the eye holes be more dark and the nose maybe super dark? But it's a cool you know, concept, kind of tiki um, skull drink thing with, with the cool like uh, local... I believe Hawaiian flowers. I could be wrong, but um, 
Like I could see like I, almost doing like fire in the eyes using that orange and yellow. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd um, be cool. but then at the same time, what's kind of cool about this color is this feels like a plastic souvenir. Mm. You know what I mean? So this this feels like you went somewhere that wanted to sell you a cool cup to yeah. drink your drink in. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So so it's like this feels because you, uh, even the tiki yeah, wood, right. it, it has it has a sheen to it a lot of time when mm -hmm. you get it like a wood tiki thing. So there'd be some highlights, but because of the highlights, it does almost feel more like a like a souvenir kind of thing. Yeah, and when you've got the umbrella and the straw in it, it feels like okay, I'm at a resort and they're they're going to be edgy by giving me the skull cup, but and I'm going to take it home and put it on my shelf kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I think it works with the colors they use just because it feels like a souvenir. Mm -hmm. And as someone who doesn't drink a lot, drinking a stiff drink out of a straw would probably be a bad idea. <laughs> but uh, as a concept, it's cool. It's fun. You know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he did a great job. Yeah, like, like, like you said, it could be just uh, you know, one of those little shot glasses or like yeah, little uh, souvenir yeah. cups. I think he did a great job. So Raphael coming in at number five. No, I was trying number four. Uh, number five, we got Shadow Battles Clinker Point Exco. Um, you have any initial thoughts here? I love the look of it. Um, yeah. You, that idea of using that negative space that way, um, which in this case, I w I'm not going to put words in the clink room's mouth, but I would, I would kind of embroider it black versus negative space, so that when you looked at it, they're raised up over the moon because because they're mm -hmm. in front of the moon. That's why you're seeing them that way. Exactly. Um, I. Again, there's some real small detail on there. Uh, the 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 crack in the mask, the eyes. Um, that I think, yeah, I think the characters could be bigger. Um, it's great pose. You know, you've got it feels like you know that looks like some sort of Greek or Roman warrior, and he's taking on some sort of ninja. You know, there's, so you got two different shadow warriors from different cultures that are going to see which one's the best. Um, so I think it's a great concept, but I I just and I love the way just that white and gray really sells the shadows of the black yeah. characters. But I think they're going to have to be bigger to work. Would would you glow in the darkness? With the white, uh, you know, does it need it? Because I, I know, know it wouldn't it, work precisely because of the gray in there. So. Yeah, and that's that would be where the issue would be because I mean I think the glow in the dark would spill over onto the gray enough. Yeah. Um, but because this is so stark, I think it works as is. Um, yeah. You know, I maybe it would be different if it was some sort of alien warriors or an mm -hmm. astronaut versus an alien or something. Then maybe I'd go with a glow. Um, but I kind of like this just with the white. I think you'd even be able to see that in the dark. It's so bright, you know, and I, you'd be able to see the value at least. It would be cool. Now, I don't know how they would do this, but, like, could you imagine this design and then he's almost stabbing him, but then when it glows, you could see it reveal that he actually got stabbed, maybe some blood dripping out or something. I don't know if, uh, practically if, I, if that would even work, but I was just thinking about, like, if you were to just move, like, let's say the the ninja guy a little bit more over just a tiny bit, and then in the glow section... You just hide the, 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 the white in there. Just use a, an actual white that doesn't glow, and then we reveal like the blood stain, or the sort almost of like uh, the three hundred. You know, yeah. if, did you ever see the graphic novel for three hundred? Even in the movie, no. they did it, where, and it's like a lot of anime too, where there's like 
and action happens, and then there's almost kind of delay of the splatter. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. On and the so the idea that, like, here, you know, if the guy with the sword or the spear, he's not getting ready to stab, he's actually in his follow-through. He's yeah. already slight. So it kind of looks like he's ready to attack, but really he's already attacked. And then the glow in the dark is kind of the swooshing motion of the weapon and the splatter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So there's always kind of that delayed action of like, oh, he runs up and, whoosh, and then two frames later, you see the person cut in half fall down. Exactly. Um, yeah, I could see that. Like, I don't know how that would work. I guess they were just hiding in white where they would need to show blood or the, the sword or whatever. But I just thought that'd be cool. This is a really unique perspective. We haven't seen anything done with this kind of backlit super moon, you know, shadow warriors in the front. Like, I think this is really fresh. So kudos. You to know what? Them. I think could be another thing too, because we're talking about shadow warriors is what it, this looks very much like the outline of the actual warriors. But what yeah. if it was more like two exaggerated shadows? Like the warriors, we don't even see the warriors, but we're seeing oh, okay. their shadows. So maybe their legs and arms are more elongated and they're more kind of, one's kind of over the other and one's under, you know, like yeah, a yeah, shadow yeah, yeah. being projected up on a wall. That might be a cool way to, yeah. to deal with that scaling issue. Instead of just them. Yeah, you're right. Because Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. But either way, I think they nailed it. Uh, we'll see yeah. how it gets through. Great pose, and I love the colors. Really striking. Exactly. All right, great job. Point X. Let's see what's next. We got Killing Time. Patrick, I believe we've seen this before. It looks familiar. So it might be like a, a resubmission, maybe a, a color change. But uh, good friend Patrick from Flanagan Studios. Is back oh, with okay. The, yeah. The yeah. Reaper. yeah um... You know, and this gives that feeling of time's up because yeah. uh, you got the broken hourglass, and then you know he's just letting that sand drip through his hands. Um, I like the green outline; gives it a little bit of a supernatural feel to it, kind of mm -hmm. like it's you know, like he's glowing or something. Um, and I like the fact that the sand, the sand breaks the outline. Yeah. Um, to, because that gives that feeling of it's pouring out. You know what I mean? It, it kind of gives it a little bit of 3D depth. Like, okay, the character has this green outline, but the sand is everywhere and it's spilling out. So I like the good composition. Nice colors. And he's got hidden like little demonic things within the sand puffs. So like little Yeah, faces. almost like a, like a, like, you know, your time's up, so here's your spirit kind of coming so, out of the out of the uh hourglass. It's not just sand, it was you in there, your your essence in there. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I love a good Grim Reaper, so I'm all in. Uh, great job, Patrick. Uh number seven, Win Studio with Splash. So um last week we had a uh, Milos in here, and he was mentioning we don't see a lot of orcas, so we got an orca in um, this week's crits. So, Wind Studios Splash, what are your thoughts here? And I like, you know, we there's been a few, um, mm -hmm. but like the last one was that very basic, it wasn't, you know, a realistic orca, as it were, it was more yeah. of an icon of an orca, in which it's such a recognizable animal that you can do it that way. Um, but this is a nice job of doing a realistic one. Um, and I can tell you as an artist who works on this kind of stuff, figuring out what to do with water is hard. Yeah. Um, and so this is, it's interesting and it, and it's got almost a, a swirl to it. That mm -hmm. helps kind of get it that I think a lot of hat designs are served well by having kind of a round or oval kind of design to them. That kind of um, this one makes you feel circular, kind of brings your eye around. You follow the orca, you follow the water back up around. It, it, it leads your eye nicely. Um, 
but part of me when I when I think of like whales jumping, it's more kind of like not so much like a dolphin, but more like a and then splash, you know. Um yeah. it's like a backflop. Yeah. Um but that being said, again, this is an interesting thing to do with the water. It's an interesting way to treat the water. Uh, it's visually yeah. interesting. Um, so, you know, a lot of times if you try and get too realistic with water, it the more realistic you get with it, the worse it looks. Um, so s sometimes you're better off just doing something interesting with it. And I like the, the color way with it. It's like a stone, navy, and teal. Um, I don't know if I love the splashes in the water around it. I mean, he might do well to like take a, a note from like a half a hour, just put it in a, a shape, maybe. Um, but yeah, I, I like the look of it. Like, I like having um, a realistic orca. But I feel like the pose is a little awkward for it. Like this, maybe the size of it. You're not really getting the grand scale. I feel like, like a, you, know. you know, part of the difficulty with orcas is the whole free willy syndrome and the the, yeah. uh, the fact that people kind of associate uh, an orca in a in a aquarium or a water park is being kind of like let them out in the wild kind of thing um mm -hmm. and this kind of feels like i think the pose make it feels like it's a performing orca you know like if you put yeah. a circle around this it'd feel like it's jumping through a hoop almost that's fair um, that's fair so i don't know and maybe that's part of the deal with the water because the water almost feels like the color of a water in a pool yeah um, so maybe if it wasn't as much of a, a teal, but more of an ocean blue, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you could maybe do the hat in a blue, have some certain waves, and then and then maybe just have a portion of the of the whale swimming out of it. That way, it's you know you're just kind of seeing. Yeah. Like, so like maybe you see part of it's part of it's in the water. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be a cool way to do it. Yeah, like the the actual like stone color. I think it's just throwing me off, and and the scaling of it. But it's drawn nice. It's cool. It's yeah. different. It's um, very it's very well done. Yeah, and I think I it would embroider it. well to look like a yeah. realistic orca. I just don't know if I love all the splashes and stuff like that. So I think yeah, like that suggestion is cool. Have it on a dark crown, oceanside blue or navy or whatever, and then just have the parts that you want to show and uh, pop out of the water a little bit. You can have bubbles and different waves, but that way you keep the grandness of the actual killer whale while still maintaining um, the outside feel. Because anything to do with that SeaWorld stuff is just super, super depressing. Like, um, it was kind of accepted. I'd almost before, like to like, see this in front of the moon. Like from the last okay. one, yeah. Like it's at night out in the ocean, jumping in front of the moon. Exactly. With this, yeah. you know, stark color up against that, that'd be kind of. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. All right. Well, good job, one studio number eight. Uh, <laughs> going from the whale to this whale. <laughs> uh, this one didn't make it. So Josh rolls with the whale fall. It's always interesting to see when whales die and how many like things it could feed because it's just massive so massive yeah. yeah and and like here he's got it that it's not only feeding but you feel like they've turned this into their home you know yeah the, the giant rib cage and the the giant skull is a great place to hang out now um i love that there's a little bit of a evil eye on that top octopus He's got a little bit of a like, um, I love that. Uh, again, nice colors. It's great detail on 
you know, anatomically, does it match up that the that the spine goes this way and the head goes this way? Probably not. But yeah. sometimes it's more important to get the element in there than if you're if you're trying to do the scale of a whale. You know, they have this giant skull where you're going to put the spine. So I think he did a nice job of laying that out um, so that everything fits in that hat canvas. Yeah. Yeah, this is cool. There's so many like little details and, you know, I think Casey will do a good job with the embroidery and the digitizing and the textures. I think it'll come out cool. This almost got me thinking like, how related are whales and birds now? <laughs> Suddenly, yeah. just like, that looks like oh, a like we, a pterodactyl uh, head yeah. or something, you know? Yeah, exactly. But uh, I think it's it's cool art. Um, the the octopus, octopi, are kind of cool. They're just kind of hanging out and um, in there. I don't know if I love the the kind of shrubbery or that that kind of. Um, the bush there thing but other than that i think it's a it's a great i design. get why he did it because i think i think it's to help end the skeleton okay because because again you know you'd have all these ribs and all these yeah. you know and so i think it kind of just okay the, there's some seaweed here and this continues on beyond there um i'm not sure i'm in love with the i think he added like the the solid color on the other side to balance it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? To kind of give it that same seaweed shape on the other side. I don't know if that's as necessary. As yeah. um because almost looks like feathers. I don't know that it needed to be balanced that way. But again, yeah. it might be a case where like I do, where I do seven iterations of things and he's like, Ma, I really need to balance this out. So I'm gonna put this on that side. So I'm not gonna question. Um yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. it's the the details and stuff in the in the skull. It's very sure. abstract, but it still it sells it in a great way. Yeah, yeah, and there's very subtle color changes there too. So it's like yeah. the lighter um, ones. But yeah, I'm with you. The the stuff on the other side to bat, to counteract the the vegetation or the, um, the anemones or whatever it is. It almost turns it into like a rooster. Um, whatever those things on like a rooster head. And it's stuff. hard because if you if you got rid of that, the the mouth of the whale extends outside that circle too. Mm -hmm. And so I think you would start to run into what you were talking about with the cascading logos. If you didn't have that balancing seaweed on the other side, this would feel off center. Even though it wouldn't be yeah. off center, it would feel yeah. off center. So Correct. maybe maybe that's why it's there. Because otherwise it's very heavy to the left versus the right. Fair enough. But uh, overall, great work, Josh. Um, really different. Like, we haven't really seen anything yeah. like this, I don't think. People love so, skulls, but I think this is the first whale skull I've seen like this. So, Yeah, definitely. All right. Number nine, um, Sierra's back with his, like, 90s mixtape of uh designs it looks like the the walkman is is beat up the mp3 player and i don't have you ever owned an mp3 player in your life uh yes yeah i'm old i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm 40 are? i'm almost 49 so i've okay. owned a walkman i've owned a <laughs> i've owned a real the real machine um yeah so Isman, i'm thinking of yeah um yeah. I think these things always do well. Um, did he do the movie night one that's yes. coming up on this Friday where it's the VHS tape eating popcorn? Yes, with the popcorn. He did, yeah. I was noticing on that one that even the bottom reel looks like a mouth. Just mm -hmm. the way you get the half circle there. Um, so he's done a real good job. I think he did the um, the cassette with the pen that was hitting the, the... pen with the tape. Yeah. The yeah. Tape coming out. Yeah. yeah, and um, I think those things always do well. You know, I deal in nostalgia a lot doing the, you know, the retro kind of logos. I've done a lot more food nostalgia, I guess. But this is one of those things, you know, 
people can relate to a pencil or a pen and a cassette tape and having to wind the tape back in. People can relate to this. And, you know, thinking how, you know, the MP3 was kind of the death of those other kind of media. And then streaming became the death of the MP3. You know, it, yeah. it, um, there's always something coming along, but then you see, you know, now people are selling vinyl again because it's got a warmth to it. It's got a different, you know, um, so I think this is the kind of thing that's always going to sell well, uh, cause people are going to relate to it. I like the colors. It's, uh, yeah. this feels like those, they, they had those more like sporty Walkmans you know, that were supposed to be, I don't know if they're like waterproof or whatever, but they were more yeah, like the bright so colors. Nice. They weren't just the, you know, the gunmetal gray or whatever. Um, yeah. So this feels more like that. And he, you know, with some very small details, tells you that's an MP3 player. Yeah. Without having to worry about Apple getting mad that it looks like an iPod or... Um, yeah. Well, uh, that era, some... that era to be sucked. So the MP3 slash mini disc era... Not yeah. knowing which one was going to win and having to plug those stupid things in. Um, I skipped that era. So I didn't have an MP3 player and I didn't have a mini disc player. That was like high school for me. I definitely had a Walkman. I definitely had a Discman. Um, I definitely remember having my Discman skip while I walked or had it into my car. And then you hit a bump, you would <laughs> have it skip. Did, did you have the cassette um, tape that plugged into the Discman that then you had to plug oh, yeah, into yeah. the cassette deck in the car? Yeah. yeah. So that Yeah, because yeah. your your car didn't have a CD player. Yeah, so you had to put then, a fake cassette in there, pulling off yeah. the Discman that's just sitting on the seat or tucked in between. Exactly. Yeah. We also had the fake the fake tape um to the fake radio player so that it could read off like your MP3 player off a of radio frequency so you could play it in your car. <laughs> Definitely had them all. Um, so yeah, this this reminds me. And to me, like this the superior era was the Walkman. The why I think Walkman was better than the Discman in, in some ways. Um, but yeah, it, for me, I hated the MP3 era. MP3 mini disc era sucked to me. And then I got back on board with the iPod color, I think it was. Um, but yeah, just the audio wars. A lot of people may not understand them. Some people will, just depending on how old you are and what you have to go through. But yeah, this definitely takes me back. I think you did a great job. Yeah. All right. Um, Rooster Belts by Clinker Edge Branding. So it looks like he's got like a Houston Oilers style logo. That's what that makes me think of. And yep. the constant battle between the Tennessee Titans and the Houston Texan fans on who should wear the Houston Oilers um branding but yeah what do you think here? i just saw a story that houston's doing new uniforms next year so i wonder if they're going to do something with that oh, wow. or at least go to that colorway or something um i and i don't know enough about what this would be but this does definitely feels like houston oilers and you've got the background shape is a drip yep and he's got like a big plumber's wrench I don't know if that's for opening and closing something on an oil well or if it's meant to be more of a plumber thing. Yeah. This definitely feels the most like a logo. Yeah. You know what I mean? This feels like the NFL logo, yeah. Yeah, NFL minor league team logo or even some a plumber business logo in Houston mm -hmm. or something. Um th so this is the most logo-y out of everything. Which is not a bad thing, because like I said, that's what got me into all this, is I like logos. Um, so I like to once in a while do something that I feel like could be an actual logo. That's still yeah. that's still my one thing that's hanging out there. I still want to do a design that ends up being used on field. That's the oh, one that's... thing I want out of this. I want something yeah. that gets used on field at some point. But That'd be awesome. Who knows? Um, awesome. But yeah, this is... This is uh, very professional and well done. Yeah, I feel like this could easily be like a faux back Houston Oilers thing. I worry about it getting approved or not. Um, one way you can kind of sneak that way through is you still could maintain a lot of the blue within the logo, but just don't use blue on the hat. Uh, just make this a white hat 
it would probably help the uh, provability legally. I and I um, I don't know about that H too, because if yeah. that H is supposed to be Houston, I think that just adds fuel to the fire. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, just just make it probably. just put a pocket there, like on overalls or something, you know. Rather, um, I just think that it, the other difficulty might be the stripes on the helmet because if those line up with, I wasn't Nothing a big enough Oilers fan growing up. I don't remember if it was blue, red, blue, or red, blue, red. I don't remember yeah. exactly, but um, you know that could be another thing that could end up being a sticking point. Yeah, you might have to flip those, but. How would you feel about coloring like the monkey wrench the silver and getting rid of him having the silver? I feel like the silver is kind of awkward as a skin tone. Um, yeah, maybe. And again, this is just me playing with colors, but do the wrench take the red of the wrench and make that the silver with mm -hmm. blue highlights on it. And then take the silver on the body and make it a lighter blue, an even yeah. lighter blue, like a real yeah. light blue. Like a, there's a couple of those blues that almost look white, like Pro Twinkle, I think, is one of them, where it's like mm -hmm. if you didn't see it against white, you would think it was white. But when you see it yeah. against white, it looks blue because that would still give you that shadow without competing, I don't think, with the other blue. Yeah, because you wouldn't want too many blues in there, I don't think. But no, but yeah, that that that'd be my only thing. It's a beautiful logo. Almost looks like you could use it as fan art or like a kind of like a T-shirt you'd buy in the, in the parking lot or something. But it, it's great looking. It you know definitely throws back to those Oilers days and stuff like that. But for sure, the. Uh, uh, I feel have like just for the for the crits, it's lacking that kind of wacky story kind of. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Again, yeah. really well done logo, mm -hmm. but I wonder how we'll do in the crits just because. Um, I don't feel like there's a. I'm sure there is a story, but I don't know that enough people know what the story is. And one okay. thing I've learned with the Monday morning crits is you can write up a big, nice story in your post and like 13% of the people read it. The rest goes, yeah. I don't get this. What this talking about? You know? Um, yeah. So it, it has to be to get through that voting process. I think it has to be a story that doesn't have to be explained. Um, and I feel like there would be some explaining needing on this one. Fair enough. But all right, we did it. Ten crits, multiple drops, shock drops, last calls. <laughs> Appreciate your time. You've been very generous uh with me. And um, yeah, I just had a blast. You're gonna have a lot of editing to do. No, nah, no, this is one I feel, shot. I feel kill. like I feel like I went really long. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. We'll give people more content to watch. All right. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to – this is easy. This is a one-shot edit, but I'll just probably throw in some of the hats that we talked about so people can see visually what, we, what we're talking about. Um, but, yeah, I, I had a blast, man. Um, Thanks for having good, me on. Yeah, it's the good thing about this is just kind of reconnecting with all the artists and having them tell their stories, and I can't wait for uh, everyone to see kind of the next phase of this project. This wasn't, you know, just – made to talk about Monday morning crits and review. So um, the next page um, will be revealed soon. But uh, yeah, just had a lot of fun doing that with you. Um, and hopefully people uh, can get introduced to you that didn't know you before. Yeah. I'd be happy to do it anytime. Yeah. So um you have anything any any parting thoughts um anything you want to plug before before we leave any upcoming projects potentially you can give info on or no i just you know i want to thank all the people that buy the hats you know and the people that are invested and every morning go monday morning go and vote and mm -hmm. you know i know 
you know, people are spending their hard earned money on this stuff. And I don't take that lightly. Um, and so, like I said, this is fun for me. This is what I do to relax, but it feels good to do something that people in some way connect with. And yeah. to think that, Hey, I did something that is going to make somebody a little happier. You know, they're they're going to get this hat and they're going to have a good day, you know? And, uh, I think anytime you, you get to be part of something where you're helping make people's days a little brighter, it's a good thing. So, yeah. And I think you've really carved out a lane. You've, you've done so many designs. You're up to 30. Now you, you, you're an elite storyteller, almost like nostalgia co um, <laughs> in it. And yeah, I can't wait to see what you got brewing next. You have a couple bangers that uh, are in production now. I yeah. can't wait arrive like on the rocks comes to mind the ice cream cups and stock i'm and excited stuff for stuff fresh stuff packs stuff. okay fresh packs that one that one was that's another one i really like i'm excited to see yeah. that one in hand that's almost like a part two to old-fashioned almost yeah um, yeah but yeah that was intentional no. yeah 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 but i'm excited for you stocking stuffers make me sad because i pitched that idea multiple times to my business partner tony and we never time it right, but it's just an elite, elite hat. Um, but yeah, um, all the best to you. Shout out to everyone who's made it this far uh, in the video. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. If you haven't done so already, like, comment, review, uh, and all that good stuff for Jay and Leon. We are out of here. Peace. Thank you, sir. Ones and twos. It's the ignition to the feet. Head not Somewhat discreet. The next thing you know is me bobbing over this heat. You trying to get to the tape deck, dubbing to catch this elite. Ain't no ways about the most complex version.